had a less than normal job when I was in college, that's for sure. I worked in a care home for adults with intellectual disabilities. The words care home conjure images of sensory gardens, plush cushions, and framed pictures of scenic mountains, but this, unfortunately, was not the case. While I was there, the residents were given the best of care, and have all since moved out of the wing of the building I worked in to these lovely houses. The building was first opened as Maryborough Lunatic Asylum in 1832. In these times, little was known about mental health and how to treat it. Patients were ill-treated by mostly well-meaning caretakers. It was once said to me that you can feel the sadness seeping from the walls in the building, and this was definitely true. It just looked ominous. It's funny, though, what you get used to, and I got incredibly used to the daily routine and the building that the residents called home. There were many stories about hauntings in the building. Footsteps were said to be heard at nighttime in the empty upper floors. Furniture was said to move around at night, and there was, at one point in the recent past, a priest drafted in to bless the building. It seemed like the perfect place for ghosts galore, but I never had an experience, apart from sudden feelings of dread or fear in certain parts of the building, until maybe my fourth year working there. It was a bank holiday weekend, and it was bitterly cold. I was having a cigarette on my break and was leaning against a wall outside with the three-story red brick building looming over me. It was for all the world like an outdoor corridor, and as I smoked, I looked up. My eyes locked with a woman standing in the middle third floor window. It must have been for a maximum of two seconds, but I can remember feeling my stomach flip. She drifted, I kid you not, drifted away from the window and I carried on smoking, trying to digest what I had seen. There was a girl with me who suddenly, frantically began looking for her keys to get back into the building in a panic. She had seen her too. My first and initial reaction was not to scream to the masses, I've seen a ghost, but rather I decided to get security and check the building to make sure no one was inside. And there was no one inside. The building was code locked, empty, and very much alarmed on account of the bank holiday. It was only on hearing this information that my brain fully registered that the woman I had seen was wearing a white shift dress and her eyes were more like black shadows than formed features. About a year later, I was telling a nurse about what I had seen, and he informed me that he regularly, whilst working nights, would see a woman with black hair and a white dress out of the corner of his eye, running through the ward. He tried to convince himself that it was merely a combination of tiredness and bad lighting. Difficult to know. On the next October pod, the Ouija board.